Hey everyone, Yuki Skevich back again with Daily Fantasy Winners, and this is going to be for the Career Builder Challenge of, uh, for this week's episode of Tea to Green. And this is a tournament that is over at PGA West in the Palm Springs area, uh, just east of LA in California, obviously. And so this is going to be a week where I'll put out a little bit of a disclaimer like I do once in a while uh, for certain tournaments in regards to recommending limiting your exposure, maybe limiting the number of lineups you want to do, or just playing cheaper stakes. Maybe you want to pass all together. Um, all those are perfectly fine. Uh, golf's a very high variance sport, but there are a few weeks where it is particularly high variance, and this is one of those weeks. And the reasoning for that, there's two reasons, actually. Uh, the first reason is that the cut for this tournament is coming after Saturday's round and not Friday's, so everybody is guaranteed at least 54 holes, uh, barring you know, withdrawals and disqualifications, of course. And then, uh, the, then there's a cut, and then there's going to be... Uh, then obviously then the half the golfers or whatever it is will play uh, the final 18 holes on Sunday. And the, the reason why they do that here is because there's three di there are three different golf courses used. Uh, we have the PJ West Stadium course that uh, was introduced recently here at this tournament. I think it was two years ago was where they started using this, this newer course. And then you've got the Nicholas Tournament course, and then you've got uh, La Quinta Country Club as well. So you've got three different courses used Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Everybody gets around there, and then uh, everybody goes back to the stadium course on Sunday. And the stadium course is the toughest, uh, easily, uh, of those three. And so, uh, so that would be the number one thing uh, is that brings it a little more high, higher variance. But the, the second reason also is that just looking at like what statistics might pop up here a little bit more here for this track in comparison to maybe like some of the other tournaments, there's for all intents and purposes, there's nothing that pops up. <laughs> uh, the, the, everything is relatively uh, equal across the playing field. Well, as far as you compare it, in, in, relatively speaking, comparison in, in, by comparing it to the other uh, to the other tournaments on tour, and so uh, there just isn't uh, really much of an edge. I don't think really to gain this week in whatever areas you're looking for. Um, certainly, there are obviously like uh, a lot, like a lot of little things maybe, but there isn't really like a couple of the bigger things or you know, really hardcore, like stronger plays you might find in certain weeks. And so, um, anyway, so this is just a week of, I would just recommend, uh, yeah, limiting your exposure, uh, or just like limiting, uh, the, uh, the amount of lineups you do or the entry fees or whatever it, it might be. And so, uh, but with that, um, there's nothing different about this tournament in comparison to the past year or two. Uh, it's the same three courses they've been used, uh, using here, uh, before that they had been using some different courses and how the exact format of the tournament plays out. This tournament actually used to be like five rounds way back in the day. It was like the one tournament that used to be that way, uh, which would be really fun, I think, <laughs> if, if that DFS was, uh, or if the tournament was five rounds now for DFS purposes. But uh, in any case, uh, let, let's just dive on right on into this. We'll take a look at the top golfers here uh, by price. We'll do it by DraftKings again. So we're going to take a look at John Rahm, uh, Brian Harmon, Patrick Reed, Kevin Kisner, and Phil Nicholson. And so um, some pretty short reasons here, actually, for a lot of these guys, actually. This is going to be pretty straightforward, a little bit more straightforward than last week. But uh, so Br uh, Brian Rahm. John Rahm uh, is the most expensive at 11800 on DraftKings, 12.5K uh, on FanDuel. And he is the best option this week. He's the odds-on favorite, and he absolutely should be. He's the best player of this group by far. If this was a major championship, we would be seeing John Rahm priced at, like, you know, if this is on DraftKings, we'll just say John Rahm is probably priced at a major. He's probably priced in the 10000 range somewhere, maybe upper 9 k range at the cheapest, something like that. And all these other golfers that are below him, you're going to see them priced in the mid-7K range. You're going to be get like, Rahm's going to be significantly more expensive. Rahm is not that much more expensive than a lot of these guys here, uh, than what Rahm, Reed, Kisner, and Mickelson. These are all guys, well, Mickelson might be a little bit more expensive, like the Masters, but most of these guys are 7K golfers right now in, in, in the best fields, and uh, Rom still isn't. And so this is just by far Rom is the play here, uh, cash and GPP. I just, it doesn't matter at all to me. Um, you're just not paying that much more. So that is really very straightforward here as far as uh, kind of a no-brainer, uh, you know, a piece of advice there for that. Uh, moving on down to Brian Harmon. Um, to me, this is kind of a complete pass. As you saw last week, if you, one thing I've liked doing here more than the PGA uh, Tour app actually has been pretty, has been improved with this uh, over the last year or so, I believe. Maybe it's just this year, but uh, they've been really good about following the player statistics for each round as it re re relates to the strokes gain statistics. It's been really nice to kind of follow and seeing how that goes, and they've been updating it better, I think. But Brian Harmon's uh, strokes gain putting, if you looked at it through the last round, he was, uh, you know, leading after the first two rounds, and his strokes gain putting was absolutely off the charts. And then the 
third round it was just average, and then the fourth round it was just atrocious. And as I said in the last week, Brian Harmon strokes game putting wasn't going to be sustainable. And I think I tweeted out some kind of a joke Friday night that his attitude was just going to make the ball go in every time or something like that, and obviously being sarcastic there. But uh, in any case, so Brian Harmon cooled off with the putter. His ball striking and driving the golf ball didn't cool off at all. It was just purely the putter, as we kind of uh, would expect. And so as a result, uh, he fell down the leaderboard a little bit last week. Uh, still finished decently, I think. But uh, in any case, uh, Brian Harmon, I I'm not, would not recommend paying 11.5 on on DraftKings uh, or 11.6 on FanDuel. I just, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. He should be at least $1,000 cheaper. Uh, Harmon is hitting the ball well. Like He's playing a good tee to green game right now, but that's just too expensive to pay right now. Um, that, it's more of a recent uh, results standpoint. A lot of that is based on the strokes game putting. And so uh, just too expensive to, to pay there. I'd much rather have Rom every single time on pretty much any golf course. Uh, probably every golf course. And then take a look at Patrick Reed. Um, he is a little on the expensive side, still at 11.1 on DraftKings, 11.3 on FanDuel. I'm not really that opposed to him, though. There's nothing for me to really say, like, from a statistic standpoint. We don't have a lot of data to go off of with Patrick Reed. Uh, he played a little bit in the fall season. He actually played relatively relatively well. Uh, but it's just a little on the expensive side. So, uh, again, like, I don't think you're going to want to make a lineup with Rom and Reed in it unless it's, like, GPPs and, you know, depending on how many lineups you're making and everything like that. But uh, I don't know. Like, it just it's one of those things where it's a little expensive, and that's really my only complaint. Um, there isn't anything particularly that jumps out to me about Patrick Reed, though, as well for this week. He is a defending champ for whatever that's worth, uh, which really isn't that much. Um, he has played in this tournament, what is it, five times. He's made the cut four out of five times. Uh, but the one tournament he did win, the one time he did win here, which was back in 2014, uh, it is the only time he's finished in the top 10 uh, at this field or at this tournament. Uh, he was T12 last year, I guess. But um, again, like I said, there's nothing really anti. I don't have anything like strongly for him or against him. It's just a little on the expensive side. So play maybe a little GPP, something like that. I probably wouldn't do it in the cash area. Uh, for Kevin Kisner, um, his strokes game putting is off the charts. I'll just show you really quickly in the strokes game putting regression tool on our website. Once again, it is a completely free thing uh, on the website to sign up for. And where are you, Kevin Kisner? There you are. Uh, so Kevin Kisner right here is a minus 0.16. Where did it go? Uh, da, da, da. There it is. Kevin Kisner is a, a, a minus 1.06. Uh, that means we're expecting him to regress quite a bit, obviously. And so um, uh, that's one thing that's not good about Kisner. And you do take a look at his recent results, and they're very good. But the problem is, is that's pretty much all predicated on the strokes gain, on the strokes gain putting. And I'll just show you one, uh, one Google Doc that I look at here sometimes. And this is uh, for uh, Kevin Kisner right here. You'll see uh, right here. He is uh, 133rd in strokes gain tee to green this year. Uh, 196th off the tee, 88th stroke skiing approaching the green. So yeah, Kevin Gisner, who's usually who was actually very strong in stroke skiing tee to green last year, and is usually typically pretty strong uh, over the last couple of years, uh, he's been pretty bad actually in that department so far. And he has played the last two weeks at the Sony and at Kapalua. And so I, from a recent form standpoint, yeah, the results aren't that bad. Although the Kapalua uh, result still wasn't that great because obviously it was a limited field, but. Um, if you do take a look here at this fourth right here, stroke scheme putting, uh, that's really where he's making all, making it all up, and that's not going to be a sustainable thing. Um, Kisner is usually a decent putter, but he's not that good. And so, uh, and, and not obviously the, the way he's putting off the charts. And just looking back at this Kisner thing, let me just take a one quick, quick last look here. Kevin Kisner, yeah, he's gaining 1.303 strokes, uh, <laughs> strokes game putting right now. So that's obviously, that's not a sustainable thing at all by any means of the so, uh, so Kisner, uh, I would not recommend here for this week. I kind of, I really do kind of, Kisner's kind of priced actually reasonably okay. Uh, if the strokes game tee to green was better and the strokes game putting maybe wasn't making up for it as much, I might like him a little bit more, but just given the form, can't recommend him. So, uh, on to Phil Mickelson. This is probably the guy I would say is the best pivot off of John Rahm. Uh, you could probably, you could actually play Mickelson and Rahm too in the same lineup as well, depending how you're constructing your lineups. But, uh, Phil is usually typically played pretty well here. He's, in, he's actually played here 16 times. Obviously, Phil's got a lot of history at a lot of these tournaments. Uh, he's made the cut 14 of those 16 times, and the only two times he missed the cut were the very first two times he ever played here in his career, which was back in 1993 and 1994. 
And so he typically has been doing well, or really over his career, he does well in these lesser tournaments. He's not somebody that usually uh, comes into with these weaker tournaments and just kind of lays down or goes through the motions. He typically does well in these type of uh, in these type of uh, tournaments that don't have as strong of fields. And so, um, yeah, so he's probably my favorite option outside of John Ron. Um, and I, it's also partially because if you take a look here, I'll show you this uh, quickly. Uh, if you just kind of compare it as you're going down, you're thinking about lineup construction. If you do use John Rom, um, you take a look here at this 9K range here and versus the 8K range here on DraftKings. You'll just kind of see it fall along the odds per dollar here with where my cursor is. Uh, it's the third. If you can't see the cursor exactly, it's the third, uh, third, to the, <laughs> third column most to the right. So the third to last column, if you will, going left to right. Uh, if you just take a look here at the odds per dollar. It's not really that much different here between the 9K range and the 8K range and even the upper 7K range. Uh, obviously, the guys that are in the 9K range are going to be a little bit better odds at the sports books. But just from a value standpoint, based on the dollars you're spending, it's not that much different. So I'm not really that big of a fan of the 9K range, especially when I take a look at some of the names here in the 8K range. Uh, there are a few guys, and even the upper 7K range, there are a few guys there that I would pretty much just almost straight up would like to have as much, if not more, than the guys in the 9K range. So uh, kind of a long story short here, I would probably just say Rom, uh, maybe Phil, and if you want to pass on Phil, you can just load up on some guys in that 8 and upper 7K range, or you can go Rom and Phil, maybe grab one of those upper 6, lower 7K range guys, and then you know fill out the rest in the middle, uh, so to speak, and just depending on you know who you like the most. And I'll mention some of those guys, of course, over on the website uh, at dailyfantasywinners.com in the forum section. And so... Uh, in any case, that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully we're getting this video up a little bit sooner than the last one. I apologize about that. Uh, I ran into a little technical difficulties. Don't think that's going to happen here this time. And so, uh, in any case, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm at Nikki Skevich on Twitter, Daily Fantasy Winners on Twitter, at DFantasyWinners. And please remember to like and subscribe to our YouTube videos and channel. Thanks. Good luck.